Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. Okay, welcome back everyone and marketing 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 you want your business to grow you got to get out there and you got to slam it hard with marketing you got to get people knowing who you are right well today we're going to speak with John Fallis uh, John Fallis uh, began his career working for a major advertising agency such as FCB out of Chicago or DDB worldwide in New York in the mid 80s his entrepreneur career began with freelance work such such uh, major shops as chat day della fema and kirschbaum and bond um, and he's also worked with uh, ken Kenneth Cole accounts rewarding, uh, resulting in awards and national press. In 1988, um, Fallis co-founded Fallis and Verdi with clients such as the American Stock Exchange, No Excuses Jeans, Solgar Vitamins, Salsa Ridge Fruit Spreads, and a case taught at the Harvard Business School featured in Forbes in 1993 Fallis DeVito and Verdi won nine ADDY awards making them the second most awarded agency in New York that same year uh, Fallis formed Fallis Inc to include a focus on non-traditional online marketing in 2023 in response to the shift shifting media landscapes and to provide alternative to traditional agency models Fallis created Fallis Marketing Therapy and in 2006 Fallis created Fallis Marketing Report blog and the marketing show with John Fallis podcast syndicated on iTunes so that's a lot of a lot a lot of stuff that uh, John Fallis has done in his lifetime and it's going to be really interesting to hear the stories that come out of that um, when we bring them on the show now All right, let's give uh, John Fallis a warm welcome to the show. And John, first off, how did you get started in uh, advertising and marketing all those years ago? Well, first, Michael, thank you for having me on your show. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Um, so, yeah, I started a while ago, and uh, I was always good creatively growing up as a kid. Uh, the question was, how do I apply that? creative talent to a career and uh, I was probably halfway through college when I got pulled aside by uh, an instructor who was teaching a graphic design class and she asked me what I wanted to do with my life and when I said I wasn't sure she said well I, I think you ought to really seriously consider pursuing something either in advertising or communication arts or some kind of media because you're really really talented so it, had it not been for that instructor, I'm not sure I would have pursued that. But, you know, that, that helped a lot. And after she gave me that uh, idea, I transferred to a university, Syracuse University, that had one of the best advertising programs in the country. So that's how I started uh, on that track. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it looked like you, you jumped out of the gates. And uh, were, were you in Chicago first or in New York first? 
So I grew up in Connecticut, uh-huh. and I was I was going to school upstate New York at Syracuse. And then uh, after graduation, I didn't feel I was ready for New York City, even though that is the mecca of advertising, as uh, some of your listeners may know. Um, they call it Madison Avenue. But um, I was uh, I was a little intimidated by New York, so did not go there like many of my uh, classmates did and uh, started out my career in Atlanta, Georgia, two years in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I got, uh, felt that wasn't fast enough for me, so I moved up to Chicago, spent three years there, and after that, I felt like I was ready for the, for the big leagues and moved to New York. Wow. All right. Because, um, because according to um, the, um, when I when I did did the Google search on you, I found you won many awards in not on, only in New York but also in Chicago. It didn't say anything about Atlanta, so. Uh, not not I won I not really <laughs> I didn't really hit my stride, um, Michael, until I moved to New York. So um, I may have won one or two in Chicago, but it really wasn't until I uh, started my own agency in New York that uh, I started winning a bunch of awards. Yeah. Now, as, um, of course, we mentioned that you had worked with um, some of the really big names out there. Um, it, the one that, that, that stuck to my mind the, the closest was uh Kenneth Cole, um, and what was it? What was it like uh, having them as a, as a client and and working with them? So I, uh, that's interesting that you mention it because certainly Kenneth Cole was a big name, um, fifteen, ten or fifteen years ago. Um, is he still a known? designer today michael uh, would yeah, you say yeah yeah uh do you still okay. still uh especially in the uh shoe world and everything is like it's still... okay yeah so uh this was in the mid 80s when um no one knew who kenneth cole was including me because he was uh he was just like a 25 year old kid who mm-hmm. um didn't want to go into his father's uh shoe shoe business <laughs> And uh, had some arguments with his father over marketing um, and felt that um, he would be better off starting his own shoe business because he couldn't, in his, his, from his perspective, couldn't get his father to do the kinds of things with advertising and marketing that he thought were really important. So when um, I had the opportunity to uh, work on the Kenneth Cole campaign, that was when I was freelancing oh, in New yeah. York in the mid eighties. And I had, uh, stumbled upon a couple of guys who, uh, had the relationship with Kenneth. They had met him. They had done a couple of ads for Kenneth at the time. And they brought me in because they felt like they needed some creative help. So I, I, I was not, I was on the creative side. One of the two guys was the, um, client contact guy so he was the one that was dealing directly with kenneth uh but um i had the opportunity uh working on the account for the first couple of years that really helped establish kenneth cole um as a uh iconic designer the iconic designer that he is now at the time he just had three stores uh-huh. and um after i guess the first few years of uh the ad campaign, uh, he had uh, over 100 stores. So uh, certainly I think the, 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 the ads that we did were, were very different, and I think that's what helped uh, increase his awareness because um, I don't know if you remember any of the ads, uh, but in New York they were really getting a, a buzz because they were running every, every couple of months in New York Magazine. So everyone in New York was seeing them. And they really stood out because they really didn't, uh, they didn't show pictures of shoes. They didn't show a big logo. They weren't like most fashion ads that had a model, you know, featured in, a, in the in the ad. They were just very edgy uh, quotes and perspectives from Kenneth Cole on whatever current event was happening at the time. 
And people who saw those ads assumed that those quotes came directly from Kenneth. But the reality is, is that uh, my partner and I were the, the creative team behind those quotes that uh, that uh, that Kenneth uh, agreed to uh, to to run run the ads for. So um, that that campaign really helped turn my career around because uh, it eventually attracted a guy who uh, became my business partner. Awesome. When you're associated, you know, it's, it's rare. A lot of advertising people work on big name brands, but it's very rare that any of them work on campaigns that they could claim that um, have really created a buzz or have people talking. So again, my only perspective of that was what it was like in New York, but when we were running those ads in New York in in the 80s, everyone was talking about that campaign and, and wondering who was behind it. So, again, that that really greased the wheels for, for my freelance business and eventually is what tra- attracted my uh, my business partner. Awesome. It, it, that's, that, that's a definitely a win-win, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. You know, they worked really well for Kenneth and it was, you know, it was very exciting. Yeah. Um, so you, you worked with, with, with a lot of big names, um, with, with, with those big names, did, um, did you, did you have larger budgets than you do with, with like, say, uh, smaller businesses? Uh, so, you know, just, just to reiterate what I said, when you mentioned Kenneth Cole now, that sounds like a big name, right? Right. When we were walking, working with, with Kenneth, there was no name. No one oh, knew who yeah. Kenneth Cole was. He had no name. Uh-huh. So it was the campaign that we created for him that ran for several years that created, helped create that brand. So, you know, contrary to what you said, yes, I have worked on some big accounts, but that was just the first few years of my, my career when I worked at the big agencies. When I was freelancing, uh, the accounts that I worked on were, were small accounts um, with with small business owners and entrepreneurs yeah. like Kenneth Cole, who was trying to build his brand. He had no name. He had no persona. So that was one of the things that uh, the work that we did for him helped create. And uh-huh. that's you know that's what I like to do for smaller clients that uh, are, are are kind of struggling to create their own brand. You know whether or not I can make them an, an iconic international brand, I, I, I can't say, but uh, I certainly have had the experience of working, you know, on on a couple of yeah. uh, accounts that were le- that you know, like Kenneth Cole, that started out basically uh, unknown as unknown people, and eventually, because of the work um, that we did for them, became known as big yeah. brands. So, as as a freelancer, um, let's let's uh, I'll I'll change my question here because i because i i i i I understand that you you help you help make him big with with the campaigns so he didn't have the big budget to put into it so um as a freelancer um how do you help um, guide people into the idea that they need to invest into their marketing invest into in into making that brand grow right so, you know, by New York advertising standards, Kenneth Cole at the time did not have a big budget, but it was big enough to run full page ads in New York magazine every three months. So, you know, budgets are relative, uh, you know, to us and maybe to you, that doesn't seem like a, a big budget to some of the people who are listening to this, um, that can sound like a huge budget. Yeah, uh, I I can't tell you uh, exactly what a full page ad in New York Magazine cost in in the uh, mid '80s, but it was probably ten grand, something yeah. like that. Yeah, you know, so you know, running that several times a year is 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 not cheap. But uh, you know, he was smart enough to realize that um, it was a good investment. I mean. The bottom line comes down to this. Uh, if marketing is done wisely, 
then it doesn't become an expense. It becomes a wise investment. Mm -hmm. And like with, with any investment, the idea is that not only do you get back what you spend, but you get back more than what you spend. You get back, you know, ideally uh, twice, three times what you spend. So that's the theory behind marketing, but only if it's done wisely. So um, with anyone who is listening to this and says, well, gee, I don't, I don't really have a budget, um, that's okay because uh, there are a lot of things that, be, that could be done with social media that, that cost uh, little or nothing. Um, the thing that's really important is that uh, you, just, you, you just do, you market, you use your, your – um, you're marketing effectively. You do effective marketing, and uh, if it's done well, you can still do a lot with with, with very little. Mm -hmm. How important is it to, to when you say wisely? I, I'm assuming you mean to plan things and to lay things out so that you so that you have a direction, right? Yeah. Well, that's 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 the problem. Is that um, first of all small business owners have two options. They could either try to figure out everything themselves or if they're um, smart enough to realize that uh, their time is probably better spent doing what they, what they know and love and find uh, experts to help them with the other things, you know, whether it be a, 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 an attorney for their legal issues, whether it be a good bookkeeper, an accountant for their accounting issues, you know, what it, whatever it might be, you, you seek, you try to find someone who's really good at those things. The problem, of course, is that especially with marketing people, there's so many marketing people out there who kind of um, present themselves as experts. And you and I were talking about this earlier. It's, it's a very confusing landscape for the small business owner to really be able to determine exactly who is good and who's not good because you don't know what you don't know. You know, it's kind of like trying to find a car mechanic, right? Most people don't know a lot about car mechanics. And so it's hard for them to, turn, to determine whether someone's a good car mechanic or not. But when you do find a good car mechanic, uh, they're worth their weight in gold. And so the same thing is true with, with, uh, with marketing. I think that's, that becomes the big challenge for a lot of small business owners. And I actually just recently wrote an article um, that I can share uh, with you later if you're interested, Michael, um, with, share you the, the link, and it's how do you find the best marketing help? So that article, there's like a, an eight-step method that uh, your listeners could, could go through to help them determine the best marketing help. So, um, but that, that, that becomes the challenge because it's very, very difficult. Right. Yeah, because, you know, we... We had to have. We talked earlier about uh, a litmus test uh, for for finding the the right help, right? And we were discussing right. um, the fact that I, I Google searched you, and that um, when I Google searched you, I found um, the, everything that led back. It, I it, I saw a common theme through three pages of Google. It was like right. around the name John Fallis <laughs> and well, let's, let's like talk about, let's you. talk about that because that is uh, not only one of the most important litmus tests that your listeners could to do use to determine uh, the, the uh, um, level of experience of, of someone, but it's also one of the easiest. And I came up for a, uh, a term for it back in 2005 called G cred, which is just a short, term for Google credibility. And the easiest and fastest way to find out if someone is really as expert as they may uh, say they are, as they, the way they may present themselves on their website, is to simply pop their name into Google and maybe add the word marketing, you know, in addition to their name and see what comes up. So that's, that's one way that they, they can uh, uh, help determine who's, who's good and who's not. Yeah. And like you said earlier, Michael, there are a lot of people who present themselves as experts, but when you Google them, there's not a whole lot of stuff that comes up to support that. 
Yeah, there's 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 a lot of fizzle out there and, and not a lot of meat, right? Exactly. So, right. Right. Yeah. So that's that's an easy way to kind of look behind the curtain. Yeah. So, um, you have the you have the, the this course and this process called marketing therapy. How does that how does that work for people? So it's not a course. Uh, it's uh, it's online consulting. Back in uh, mm-hmm. oh, the early two thousands, I was coming across a lot of. I would go to different business events, and uh, at the time, I had my own ad agency. And when people found out I was uh, this big ad agency guy, marketing expert, at these business events, they would come up to me and they'd start picking my brain about how they market their their business and. Many, if not most of them, really were not that interested in advertising because they were smaller clients. They didn't really have an a- advertising budget. But all of them, of course, needed marketing help. And half the time when I started talking to these people because they were so um, freaked out about everything that was changing with the digital landscape and they were so, you know, these are people that live and breathe their business, I felt like I was a therapist talking to these people. So uh, back then, there was no, no such thing as Skype. I mean, no such thing as, as Zoom, but there was Skype. So I decided, you know, this could be an interesting business model because clearly there's a market out there, of smaller business owners and entrepreneurs and startups that are all looking for marketing help. Mm-hmm. If I could get on their radar, uh, I, I think I could really help these people and enjoy it, enjoy doing it in the process. So the question for me was, well, how do I stand out uh, from all the other, quote, marketing consultants out there? Uh, the last thing I wanted to do is call myself Follis Marketing Consulting because that's pretty boring. And, I again, I reflected on these conversations where I felt like I was a therapist talking to these people because they were so emotionally wrapped up in their business. So I branded it as Follis Marketing Therapy. And with that, I went up uh, in uh, 2004 with a website that allowed me to talk to small business owners and entrepreneurs around the country via Skype. And it's just one-on-one consulting. They, you know, they, they pay for my time. And it's, it's you know, no, no courses, no packages, no books, no, you know, no video. It's just, it's just one-on-one uh, talking to someone who knows probably a lot more about marketing than they do and can uh, can help them with their business. And I'm really proud of the fact that many of the people that I've worked with uh, since then have given me some, uh, some really great testimonials uh, based on the work that uh, I help them with. Okay. Is there, uh, is there, there a process that you follow that, that guides people to, to the right well, yeah, you know, I kind of use the analogy of coming in, uh, you know, when you're not feeling well and you see a doctor, what's the first thing you do? You, you know, you're not exactly sure you feel a pain in your shoulder. Maybe your your stomach hurts a little bit. Maybe mm. your knee is a little bit sore. Maybe, you, you know, you, your, your vision is, you're not really sure what's going on. Maybe there's, you know, you're feeling different aches and pains. So what you do is you go to your primary care physician, you get, you know, you get a once over, you get a physical. So I follow that, that same process. When I start working with someone, I don't know anything about them or their business. So the place to start is just, uh, spending some time talking to them one on one. It usually takes a couple of hours, really, um, to do that. And, uh, just, I, I, I do a lot of listening and a lot of, question uh asking and pretty quickly uh you know once we get started and i start asking questions because i've just worked with so many uh different flavors of business owners over the past uh 25 years i can i can get to the source of the problem pretty quickly and once we both identify that source and agree what that problem is then we figure out the the next steps of what's the best way to address that problem okay uh, and, and that makes makes per- perfect sense, you know, one step at a time, right? Right. Yeah. So you know, when you know, I, again, I see some of these experts, and you know, they have a niche with email marketing, or they have a niche uh, with getting more views on LinkedIn, and and they are specialists in different niches. 
And I don't really, um, you know, it's, it's confusing to the small business owners because these guys sound like they're going to solve all your problems. But, um, if you really don't, um, aren't really clear what the problem is, you can't start using various digital media tactics, uh, to solve it because you may be, uh, going using some tactic that really doesn't get to the core issue of what your problem is mm-hmm. so um that's i think one of the things that um has enabled the marketing therapy uh business model to work well is that one-on-one yeah custom uh consulting with the business owner yeah so um is there a commonality like it do you, like uh, more than fifty percent of businesses have a, have a very similar problem, or is it very individual to the business? It it, it really every every business has their own issue, you know. Um, I mean, ultimately, it's how do I get more sales, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know that's that's usually the the universal challenge. How do I get? So you know, sales starts with awareness. You know, so, you know, you, you take steps back. So, but, you know, and that's one of the first questions I ask, what is your problem? You know, what's, what's working for you, not what's not working for you. <clears throat> but, you know, a, a universal issue tends to be, how do I make more money? And, you know, the way people make money is to get, you know, clo- close more deals, get more sales, things like that. Um, if you're, if you're an organization, uh, it may be a little bit different. It may be about getting more members, right, to your to your organization. So, um, if you're a coach, it may be how do I get more more clients, right? So, you know, again, it starts with how do I uh, get in front of the people that I'm trying to connect with, and then once I do get in front of them, oh, what is the message or the content that I'm putting out there? That's going to get them uh, to want to work with me or pay me or become a member of my organization. And right. that's where, you know, some of the cre- creativity comes in. You know, my background is, is not uh, as a business guy so much, even though I learned a lot about business and marketing uh, over the years. But my, my, my core uh, uh, ability is, is creativity. And I, I think that's often the missing agree, ingredient with a lot of marketing efforts because um, they're just really boring. You know, people are putting out messages and stuff, and they just don't realize they don't have the ability to kind of, you know, it's it's their business, it's their product, so they think just talking about it is really going to excite people. And they, they don't have the ability to look at it objectively and realize how boring it might be the way they're presenting it. So that's one of the things that I can uh, really help them address. Yeah. You, you, you hear a lot of, uh, of, of these uh, catchphrases out there. Oh, you got to find your client's bloody neck and, and you got to put, make sure you put the right amount of salt into their wounds so that they scream that they want your help and all that kind of, you, you, and I hear these guys talk about that, but you're, you're talking, you're, you're not, being graphic about it, but you're being honest about it. It's like bloody neck and salt into the wound. Uh, I mean, you, are you talking to uh, Stephen King here or something? <laughs> exactly right. It's like you, you. I hear a lot of a lot of these guys. They uh, they they talk about these. They say that they're, they're marketing experts and they're going to like get all these clients for you. And they start talking all these graphic terms and stuff like that. And it's like. And I'm listening to you talk, and it's it's honest, and it's straightforward. It, it, it is we have to get the right message in front of the right people so that they just want to buy your stuff. You know, if 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 uh, there's nothing else that anyone takes away from this uh, interview, um, Michael, um, I'd like it to be this. There are no fast, easy solutions, right? Mm -hmm. So anyone uh, who presents themselves as offering something that's fast and easy and is going to make you a million dollars and and get you know make you rich quick, um, I would I would run the other direction. 
uh, like most things in life, um, uh, things that uh, are, are, are worth something uh, do take some time and effort to, if, mm-hmm. if you're going to do it right. So uh, there are no fast and easy systems. Uh, There are many people out there talking about these systems that are kind of uh, just designed. If you follow my system, you know, it's going to work for you. It's it's a proven system, yada, yada, yada. Listen, if you want to try it, go for it. But that's, that's not what marketing therapy is about. And again, it really comes down to the people that I've worked with and the test testimonial, the testimonies that I've gotten from the people I work with that I think at, at the end of the day, that's another litmus test of how you can judge someone is, uh, the, you know, look at the testimonials. They, sh- they, they better have a bunch of them and they better be believable. Right. Well, yeah, you can always pay a copywriter to write you a bunch of testimonials that that are fake. I, right? I, I suppose, and then, you know, for that reason, <laughs> on my website, I don't just um, have the quotes um, that were given to me by by the people I worked with, but I've actually um, I've scanned in when they've you know this was years ago that when they uh, if if they sent me a letter, or I would I would ask them many of them to like send me a letter, so I could actually scan in the letter that they sent me. And then they, when people go to the testimonial page, they, they see the soundbite, the quote that the client said, but then they have the option of actually seeing the actual letter. So anyway, uh, I, I try to do that to offset any uh, skepticism about testimonials. Yeah. So you advise people to, to look for that. There's a little those little tidbits of proof that, that, that they aren't making this stuff up and that. Yeah. And, you know, people. unfortunately, as you just said, Michael, there's there's so many bullshitters out there. You know, yeah. I, I suppose there are people that uh, that can uh, make up some testi- testimonials. But, you know, you know, at the end of the day, that's going to come back to hurt them because uh, if people if they if they bullshit these testimonials and then people hire them to work with them, they're probably going to be disappointed. The people that that hire these people on these fake testimonials are probably going to be uh, disappointed pretty quickly. And there's nothing worse than an unsatisfied customer. Oh, yeah. You know, um, or the gold, right? Right. So, yeah. Um, with 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 your uh, marketing f- uh, therapy, are there some, like, really cool stories of, of people that you just had a really great time putting their, putting their work together? Um, well... To um, to reiterate a point I was making earlier about a lot of business owners don't know what they don't know. Uh, one of my best uh, relationships with marketing therapy um, was with a guy who initially was introduced to me as an advertising guy who would do a great commercial for him. He was looking for to, to run a commercial on cable for his product, and uh, I was happy to talk to him. I, I've done a number of commercials over the years for, for uh, various clients, but when I began talking to him and asking him about his product and his business, it became pretty clear to me pretty quickly that based on what he was telling me that it would have been a mistake for him to do this TV commercial it would have been a waste of his money because he didn't realize that he needed a better website. He needed better marketing. He needed better branding um, because the, the commercial was going to include his website. And I felt that if he didn't have a, a really great website that helped showcase his product, uh, his his uh, media dollars doing the TV would just be a waste of money. Mm-hmm. So when I diverted the conversation uh, away from doing the TV commercial toward uh, doing a better website uh, and explained to him that I would be happy to do the TV commercial, I just didn't think that it would be a wise investment for him, and I told him why. And uh, once I made the case to him, as I just shared with you, he actually thanked me for that, and that's when I was just starting to do marketing therapy at the time. He was not even aware 
that I was doing marketing therapy. He just thought I was an advertising guy who could, who did TV commercials. So when I uh, told him about mar- marketing therapy, he got excited and ended up being um, a client for about two years. You know, initially he hired me, I think, for maybe four or five hours just to have the conversation about his website. And um, once we got through those hours, he just continued hiring me for more and more packages of hours uh, to the point where we had a, a two-year relationship. And I was just kind of, we had ongoing conversations over that period of time, uh, just on any number of things related to his business. So, you know, that's a story I like to share because uh, I think a lot of um, business owners are, are are in that boat where they think they know what they need, but again, because they don't really have the perspective, um, they they don't know what they don't know. Right, right. So it, it's 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 easier for you maybe to see some of those problems because you're on the outside looking in, and when exactly. you're on the inside looking around the room, all you see is the room, but you can't see on the other side of the wall that. I, I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, you know, I was just, just to be I'll be honest with you, Michael. I was shocked that he didn't realize that before he does a TV commercial for a product, he better have a great. Uh, website for that product where people can go and learn more about it and really be excited about it because the commercials we're talking about are you know maybe 60 seconds Mm -hmm. all you can do is pique their interest and then you know drive them you know what he was selling it wasn't something simple it was something that required um some understanding he was he was selling a series of this was a while ago so he was selling a series of dvds about a particular subject uh-huh. So it wasn't just like selling a flashlight or an umbrella or, you know, a piece of technology that in in 60 seconds you could really communicate pretty easily to, to the to the viewer. This was a series of DVDs that was about a particular subject that required a bit of understanding. And that's why the website was so important in that situation. And I was just astounded that he didn't realize it. But, you know, he didn't. And... I I don't think that's really that unusual for you know I he's not the only one that I I have come across during my marketing therapy where um business owners are pretty convinced that they they the problem that they thought they had was the the problem they should focus on and and very often that was not the case. Yeah. Yeah, the it that that does does make sense that if it if it's a topic matter that you want to you give them 60 seconds to get them to the website and then you want to give them a little more explanation as to the topic matter so that they know they're buying the yeah right the thing. website had to close the deal the the the, the point yeah. of the the commercial was to um pique their interest and go to the website but the website is really had to had to sell it, had to close right. the deal. Right. Right. And at the time, I don't even think he had a website. I think he was just trying to sell it just by com- from communicating what he could in, in a 60-second ta- cable, cable TV spot. And I just thought that was a, a waste of his money. And, you know, fortunately, he agreed. Yeah, yeah. But, but, and, you uh, know, listen, I thought uh, I, I, I kind of risked by by – uh, deciding that I needed to tell him that um, I had to risk the possibility that he 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 might disagree with me and just say, "Listen, I'll find someone else to do a TV yeah. commercial if you don't if you don't think that's you know a good expense of my money, I'll find someone else to do it." You know, goodbye. And you know, I could have easily lost uh, a job that probably would have paid me pretty well. So, I um, I've never done things just for the money. That's never been, uh, uh, you yeah. know, I, I like making money, but that has never been my my primary motivation throughout my career. Yeah, well, you you said you t- you took you took a risk, but but is is honesty always that big of a risk? Is telling a t- telling a lie and selling something that 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 uh, that's a, wa- a waste of, of of somebody's invested dollars? It, that seems to be more of a risk than telling the truth and saying, "Hey, maybe you should go this direction instead." Well, yeah, I, I agree <laughs> with it, but um, sometimes. Um, being honest, you know, I, I was honest with some other clients and they just didn't want to hear it because they were so convinced 
of what they believed. And I just gave them my uh, honest opinion. And sometimes that would be a deal breaker. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, well one of the things that, uh, that, uh, that, that we, that we talk about a lot on, on, on this show is like the ideal client. Right. And if that ideal, if, like the 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 guy with the, with with the with the DVDs and the and the TV spot that decided to let's build a better website instead of going with the TV he sounded sounded like the the, the perfect client you know he listened he was coachable you know yes. <laughs> he was it's he like, was you, and that's why I love talking about him because um, it's frustrating when someone and I've had this situation happen a couple of times fortunately not many but. A couple of times I'll have someone uh, who will hire me and then they just won't listen to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, they start telling me everything that they want uh, to do and, and, and what they want me to help them with. And um, at a certain point, if I don't think it's the right direction for the business, I will, I will tell them that. And, um, and it hasn't happened often, but... Um, I will tell them that I'm probably not the best person to be working with. But that's okay, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I don't. I don't. I don't want to waste my time with someone who um, is uh, not going to um, appreciate and value, uh, yeah. you know, what what I can help them with. So. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like like any relationship. Uh, you don't really know until you start working with someone and start getting like dating or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You hope that uh, when you meet someone, that um, you get off to a good start and it 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 continues and it's a it's a um, both people feel the same way, but it doesn't always happen. Mm, yeah and that's and that's why you know with my marketing therapy if i say well don't you know you don't need to hire me for 10 hours or 20 hours that's why i have you know a, a five hour package and a four hour pack a two hour package you know hire me try me for two hours i used to do one hour michael but i just realized that um <clears throat> that wasn't enough time yeah because uh any any business owner who really cares about their business is going to um, have a lot to talk about and just one hour is just not enough time really, especially if they want me to start giving them my feedback because uh, oftentimes they will talk for nonstop for the first hour and, uh -huh. and I want to have give them the benefit of giving them some feedback. But it is important for me to start off by listening and asking questions because I, I need to do that before I can start um, giving them my, my perspective. So uh, two hours is the minimum just to get started. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that makes sense to, to make sure that, that, that you're doing people a disservice if you don't find a minimum to work with people, right? Right. So, um, so the... At, at the end of, at the end of the whole process with 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 your marketing therapy um, what's the ultimate result I mean it's going to vary from client to client I'm sure but what's the one thing that you want them to, to be able to get out of that uh, well one of the things we always start out with with that is uh, determining what their um, marketing goal is mm -hmm. Uh because without a goal, you you don't know whether or not you're going to achieve that goal, right? Um, so that's what we we try to determine up front. And when that goal is achieved, if they if they're satisfied with that and and don't have another goal that they want to proceed, that's when it can end. Oftentimes, uh, if I've helped them achieve one goal, uh, they're happy about it and want to continue working uh, with me to help them achieve additional goals because marketing is an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. So if their goal is, uh, you know, uh, one thing um, and they reach that goal, then why not, you know, uh, raise the bar up 
a little bit and, and go for a bigger goal and see if we can achieve that goal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense because, you know, the, one of the points of business is, the, is, is to keep it growing, right? Yeah. And, you know, I say, you know, start with something that you think is achievable. You know, if you're just, you know, uh, it's like any any goal, right? If you're if you're uh, 300 pounds and you want to lose weight, uh, maybe the goal shouldn't be I want to get down to, uh, you know, 150. If you're 300 pounds, maybe the goal should be, well, let me get down to 200. (laughs) Let me see if I could lose 100 pounds. Right. Right. Yeah. If yeah. you say if you're 300 pounds and you say my goal is to get to you know 130, um, that's that may be um, shooting a little bit too high. I, listen, I always encourage people to you know to you know shoot for the stars, but you also want to be realistic. So I, I say let's 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 shoot for something that's that you know is is uh, maybe more realistic. Yeah. And let let's let's hit that goal, okay? And once we achieve that goal, then then let's let's you know, let's once we get down to 200, let's uh let's get down to let's see if we could go down to that, you know, 130. Yeah, yeah. That that, that makes sense, right? Don't don't try to try 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 to swallow the the meal whole. Take take it a, yeah, a bite Yeah, because at a time, right? because <laughs> if it, you know, they they um if they want to do too much too soon, then the problem with that, Michael, is they could get easily discouraged. Yeah, yeah. Right? Well, yeah. They, there it is. They, they, they discourage. They quit. And right. You know. Yeah. Um, so you have to have you have to have little victories along the way just to see that it's working. So I usually yeah. say, you know, let's let's start out with a a goal that you really want to achieve, but let's let's make it you know keep it keep it a really realistic goal and uh, see if we can see if we can do that together yeah all right well we're starting to wind down out of time um what are the best ways um like i said uh, john fallis inc googles very very well what are other best ways to 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 find you yeah um well my website is fallisinc.com and uh, for your listeners, that would be F as in Frank, O L L I S as in Sam, I N C dot com. And the other thing we haven't really talked about, Michael, that I think some of your, your listeners might uh, like to know about is Big Idea Video. Uh-huh. Because about um, eight years after I started marketing therapy, um, I've always done been involved in video since the late 90s and uh around uh 2012 2013 uh everyone was asking for video because uh it just became um a very uh smart way to market your product or service and since i had been doing uh creating video content for so many years i decided to create a business around that, where I started doing these explainer videos that are more animated graphic videos that um, explain a product or service and really uh, help um, customers become uh, excited about a product or service. So when they go to fallisinc.com, they'll have a couple of choices. They can go directly to marketing therapy. Or they can go to another link uh, that will uh, go to my Big Idea video channel on YouTube and showcase some of the video work that I've done for clients uh, in the past uh, 25 years. Awesome. Cool. Well, it's been great having you on the show. I hope to have you back again soon um, to talk about some of your other achievements because, like you said, uh, the the video marketing and you're also an award-winning um, you created a, a an award winning documentary, shall we say, right? <laughs> so I did, we, and we that would definitely be best talk best talked well. about in another show. That's a whole other yeah, subject, but yeah. uh, yes, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so so we definitely got to have you come back. Um, and seriously, uh, everybody listening, go to Follis, uh, Inc. dot com. Check out what, what what John has to offer, and it's like in it's going to light your business up. It's like he's he's creative and effective 
And that's what you really need in your marketing corner is creative and effective. So, yeah. All right. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate that. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. All right. Hang on this. This show has been produced by Depictions Media. Please contact us at depictions.media for more information.